And what I want to spend my life doing is to show others that there is a different approach that's more effective in philanthropy that actually gets results. And I want that to be my legacy. That's all I care about. It's a goal that is possible because Frank Justra trusts his instincts. He possesses a willingness to seize opportunities without hesitation, like the day his father unsuspectingly inspired Frank to become a stockbroker. It was one morning and we were looking, he was, we were sitting at the breakfast table, he was reading the stock quote page. And I asked him a simple question, I said, what is that? And in that moment, I realized I wanted to be a stockbroker. The desire gripped him so quickly that within half an hour, he was in his father's broker's office. His ability to build relationships and then trust the people he's connected with has been a hallmark of his career. One of those people was about to start Yorkton Securities and pitched Frank on taking a chance and joining him. He says, listen, I'm opening a new firm and I need a junior partner. Uh, and he says, I'll give you 10% of all of my business. And he was a million dollar producer in those days. And so it was just really, when we opened uh, in December of 1980, it was just three, four people. And that was it, that was the beginning of it. It didn't take long before Frank was looking for even greater adventures. But then I got um, the opportunity came up to go to London. And again, another of those <laughs> decisions you make in a, in, a, in a split second, we can go over there, have a great time, live in London, and in six months we can come back, get it all set up, come back. Six months turned into seven successful years. But by now he was keen to come home to Vancouver. And this time, rather than build, he wanted to rebuild the company he helped create, and he wanted to do it as the president. Basically told all my partners, you can be this kind of firm or that kind of firm, I don't care. Choose. And if you choose to be that kind of firm, I'm out of here. And out of there he was, and straight into another industry he knew little about, movies. Frank loved them, and he wanted to make them, even though he had no idea how to do it. True to his unique way of seeing the world, he found a way to make money where others kept coming up short. You know, there are thousands and thousands of film companies started every year, but only one, one, in half a century has become a major Hollywood studio, and that's Lionsgate. So how could this happen? I think he actually sees opportunities others dismiss. And so he, when he sees them, he pounces on them and he makes it happen. With Lionsgate Studios successfully launched and new leadership in place, Frank stepped aside and gazed out over the horizon once again, ever eager to find new opportunities. This time he saw a glint in gold at a time when the mining world believed it was dull. His passion for ideas, his passion for doing something new, his passion for taking risk, his passion for doing different things, uh, I think that is his, the secret of his strength. I had this idea about gold. Nobody cared, nobody believed me, and we were actually ridiculed in some of the places where people were making fun of us, you know. What looked like a gamble has turned into one of the great mining success stories of the past 50 years. Silver Wheaton and Gold Corp are dominant players in the production of that reddish yellow precious metal. Gold Corp. Lionsgate and uh, Silver Wheaton, those three companies, those are world-class companies. Not many guys create multiple world-class companies as well as there's lots of others. As if that weren't enough for multiple lifetimes, Frank Justra has created numerous other companies that created opportunities for thousands of employees in food, technology, and television, just to name a few. This is a very busy guy. Isn't he? He's busy in business, he's busy in the community, his social life, he does, I mean, he does stuff, extreme stuff. When he focuses on something, you better get out of the road, he's going to do it. And this brings us full circle to his desire to give back. In 1997, Frank established the Radcliffe Foundation to support local, national, and international causes that focus on women, children, education, and jobs. What he brings is incredible energy and uh, ideas and uh, he does his research street to home he went out in the streets and he didn't only go out once you know he sort of moved from uh, 
working with the boys at clubs in, in Vancouver, the street to home, to all of a sudden he's in Greece and then he's Syria and he's in Iraq. And I think it's, it's partly he really wants to help and too, I think there's a curio an insatiable curiosity. And help he has, always looking for ways to build sustainable philanthropy. Yeah, it's, it has to be sustainable and that's with everything we do, like the stuff, the poverty alleviation work that I do, um, uh, that I've done over the years with, with the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton Justra Enterprise Partnership, is all about sustainability. And then there is his willingness to throw himself into the center of the heartbreaking human tragedy that continues to unfold in Syria, forcing millions of people to flee, many of them landing in Lesbos, Greece. There's not enough people in the world that uh, uh, do what Frank has done. When you do the kind of thing he's doing over in, in, uh, in Greece and, and, and with the refugees and coming out of uh, Syria, I guess, and other places, uh, that's true giving. True giving is when you give money and you get nothing back for it. And uh, certainly Frank has, uh, best of, that I understand, has really given of himself and his money to people that can never ever repay them. My inspiration is to spend the rest of my life making sure that we affect as many lives in a positive way as possible and that we influence the kind of change that we are in the models that we're designing, whether it's poverty, whether it's refugee relief, whether it's disaster relief, or whether it's whatever it is, we did it in homelessness, coming up with new models that are more efficient, more effective, um, and um, changing lives.